Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. How's it going? In this video, I'm gonna to try to answer the age old question, which film camera should I buy? There is literally hundreds and hundreds of film cameras out there that you may have heard of or you may not have. And I've tried a couple of them. Um, well, that's not very convincing. Instead of trying to tell you which camera I think is best for you, I'm gonna just talk about every film camera that I've ever tried today. Some things I'm gonna to try to cover are whether I still own the camera and I think it's worth buying. Talk a little bit about price versus, you know, the quality and what you're getting. And also, of course, show you the photos that I've shot with them because that's really where the real pudding is. I love seeing sample photos for myself and I find that that a lot of the time is the easiest way to decide whether I think a camera is worth buying. Now, I do just wanna say there are hundreds and hundreds of film cameras out there. Um, I mean, obviously, because for decades, film cameras were the only types of cameras. So there are cameras like the Minolta Big Finder AF50. Have you ever heard of this? I would think probably not. And there is so many cameras just like this one out there that I've never heard of either. Now this might get a little crazy because I have owned a lot of different film cameras, I'm guilty to admit, but what could be more fun than sharing them all in one video and also sharing a lot of images from each of these cameras. I'm gonna start with the Mamiya 645. This camera pretty much taught me everything I know about film photography and I think this is probably my recommendation if you're brand new to medium format or film photography in general. I really love this camera and the fact that it shoots 16 frames on a roll means that it's really forgiving if you're starting out or you're moving up to medium format. Not only is this thing really compact for being a medium format camera, but it's also totally modular. So you can really customize this thing to your liking, whether you like a waist level viewfinder or you like an eye level prism. I use this thing for portraits, I used it for landscapes, and it was a great all around camera, even to just walk around town with and snap some photos on a day off. So considering kind of like what medium format cameras tend to go for when it comes to price, this thing is actually relatively cheap. You can pick these up for a couple hundred bucks and you're getting a lot of camera for very little money. With these kinds of cameras, you don't necessarily have to worry so much about sharpness when it comes to lenses. It's more so a result of what kind of scans you're getting and also how big the film negative is. So 645 comparable to 35 millimeter is obviously a step up in terms of sharpness and you're gonna get that really nice shallow depth of field that's known as the medium format looks and it has a special place in my heart for being my first real film camera. The next camera that I bought and arguably my favorite film camera ever is the Mamiya RZ67. And I've made so many videos on this thing. So you could probably go watch one of the other videos that I've made and it goes a little bit more in depth about it. But what I will say is that for me personally, this camera really does it all. I've taken a lot of portraits with it in studio and outdoor. I've traveled with this thing. I carry it around a lot, even though it's considered a heavy camera, but I really just have taken this thing so many places and it's been through so much and it just works through all of it. I would say at this point, 90% of my work is shot on it. And yeah, I love this thing. You can pretty much watch any video on my channel and it will probably involve that camera to some point. So I won't talk about it too much anymore, but just know it's a good one. Let me see what my next one is here. Oh, the Contax G1. This was back to 35 millimeters. So I was shooting a lot of 6.7 and I wanted something more easy to have by my side, so I ended up picking up a Contax G1. 
I thought this camera was super nice until I got the film back and I realized that more than half of my photos were out of focus. And I'm not sure if that was user error or there was something wrong with the camera, but I think old autofocus technology is just much more unreliable compared to what we have nowadays in film cameras. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy an autofocus camera, but with a rangefinder where I couldn't necessarily judge whether the camera was in focus or not, I just never really had the trust after I got some rolls back to shoot with this thing. So at that point I was pretty bummed, but I was still wanting to shoot some 35 millimeter alongside my medium format. So I went for something very basic, a basic SLR, which was the Canon A1. To this day, I love that camera. I still shoot with it all the time and it's probably the most reliable film camera that I've had. It just always works and it's really simple to use. It has everything built in. It has a light meter, the lenses are super affordable and it's just a really great introduction to film as well if you are looking for that. Let's move on to the Mamiya 6, which was a camera that I owned for a very short amount of time actually. I bought this kind of impulsively because I wanted something to travel with that was still medium format. And the Mamiya 6 seemed like a good affordable option at the time. It shoots square format. It has a couple nice lenses for it. And design wise, this camera is super beautiful. The lenses collapse into the body. The photos are super sharp and it has a really clean range finder. That's super fun to use, but I realized that the format that it shot, which was six by six, just really wasn't for me. I'm not somebody who likes shooting in square format, and that camera made me realize that, which is okay. If you are somebody who wants a travel camera that's medium format, I would recommend the Mamiya 6 if you're fond of square. It's super sharp, it's definitely a lot cheaper than the Mamiya 7, and I actually kind of regret selling mine. After the Mamiya 6, there's obviously the Mamiya 7, which is just like the Mamiya 6, except for the fact that it shoots 6x7, which is my preferred format of film. The only issue, and probably the reason that I don't own this camera right now, is that it's really expensive. I think this has to be one of the most expensive medium format film cameras, and, and that's probably the biggest deterring factor for not owning one of these. I don't own one, but I spent a lot of time in Knoxville shooting with my friend Corey Wolfenbarger's Mamiya 7. talk about the final and most recent camera that I've picked up, which is the Voigtlander Bessa R. And this thing is just beautiful in terms of how it's made, the feel of the camera when you shoot it, and how compact and light that little thing is. But it shoots a beautiful 35 millimeter negative. And who do I think this camera is for? I think if you're somebody who's maybe looking for a Leica M6, but you don't want to spend Leica M6 money, this is a really great bet. You can buy three or four of these for the price of one Leica M6. And aside from that extra build quality and the Leica lens selection that you get, I think the Voigtlander Bessa R is a really good choice. I kind of thought at the end of the video after talking about all these cameras, I would have like an answer being like, this is the one that you should buy, but I really don't. I think what's important to note is that all these cameras have advantages and disadvantages for different reasons. It's not necessarily like buying digital cameras where, you know, one has more resolution than the other. These cameras have totally different applications and I think that's really important to note. So I hope you found this helpful in maybe deciding what camera you wanna buy. Thanks for watching either way. You can check out my Instagram in the description. And finally, I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for over three years now and I recently redesigned my website using their incredibly customizable templates. 
It makes it so easy to get a custom portfolio that fits your needs up and running. You can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you do that down below because I upload every Wednesday at 3 p.m. New York time. And you can check out my Instagram in the description. That's it for this video. Peace.